Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our first Father, we thank you for the wonderful day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for bringing us successfully into this new year, 2024. Lord, we are here to give you all the praises, the honor, adoration for the mighty work you've done in our lives, in the life of our families. Father, we thank you because many that started the journey, 2023, could not see this present year. But it pleases you, Lord of heaven, that you will be among the people that will stand to celebrate your faithfulness. For that reason, O Lord, we return all glory, we return all honor, adoration unto thee in Jesus' name. As we've come, Lord, in appreciation to all what you've done, we pray, Lord, as today, being the first Sunday of the year, there will be great impartation. You will establish also, God of heaven, physically, spiritually, and all around in Jesus' name. Anything that will make that not to be our portion, we pray, mighty Father, King of glory, you will take them out of the way. That at the end of this service, we will be thoroughly established over the events and activities of 2024 in Jesus' name. Teach us your word and make us to be the doers of your word. We thank you, we bless you, Father, because you know have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Today, we are going to consider our lesson from the, the scripture, lesson 69. Lesson 69, uh, titled Sundry Laws of Purification. Sundry Laws of Purification. And you can find the lesson in page 125 of our booklet. So we are, before we proceed, I would like someone to remind us, you know, it has been a couple of weeks that we took our last Sunday scripture, but at least for the people that have good memory, I want you to remind us our last topic and also what you gain from it. All right, Apostle, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last uh, story was uh, the children of Aaron offering a strange fire unto the Lord. And uh, because of that, the punishment of the Lord came upon them instantly. So what I learned there is that uh, God is not going to be taken for granted, especially those but the Bible said that he that named the name of the Lord should depart from all evil. So, uh, if God could deal with the children of Aaron, I don't think any of us who have had the knowledge of the truth should be playing with the holy things as he's doing his normal business. So, it's for us to advise ourselves and be conscious of what we are doing in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, you've tried. Strange fire in the tabernacle. And as we've heard from our brother, it, it happens to be that the children of Aaron did what they were not asked to do. And the lesson we learn from there is that God is not a respecter for anybody. We should not do what God did not ask us to do because the consequence may be very, very grave. So, uh, to be forewarned, to be forearmed. We as believers, we have realized the essence of keeping to God's instruction, not only against his wrath, but for our own benefit as well. Today we are going to consider uh, the sundry laws of purification. And our text is taken from Leviticus chapter 11, 1 to 47 and 12, 1 to 8. And also our memory verse is taken from 
Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. If there is any brother or any sister that can help us to recite the memory verse. Okay, it's the character of this one. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11, 45. Thank you very much. God bless you. So, you see, uh, the Lord, for I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall be holy, for I am holy. So, that is the primary purpose of all the different kinds of laws. Okay. Let someone help us to read from our text, Leviticus chapter 11, from 1 to 10, as we consider all the laws. That made this topic to be titled Sundry Lord. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus 11 from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whosoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cord among the beasts that shall ye eat. Verse 4. Nevertheless, this shall ye not eat of them that chew the cord, or of them that divide the hoof. As the camel, because he cheweth the cord, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cord, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hell, because he cheweth the cord, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cord, he is unclean to you. Verse 8 Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch, they are unclean to you. This shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever had fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, then shall ye eat. Verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living things which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. See, God is so much interested in the physical, not only spiritual welfare, but physical welfare as well, of his children. It is important for us to understand the reason for the laws given by the Lord. You know, it's, take for example, you want to learn about something. You need to spend time to understand how that very something functions before you could be able to do better with whatever, be it electronics, be whatever. You buy a brand new phone. Don't just on the phone and start using it. You go through the manual to understand exactly how that phone functions. Because each, each of the device has its unique you know, activities. So likewise, God gave his law. And you can see from my memory verse, the essence is for us to understand his attribute, his nature. And then giving out law, that to will remold us to replicate his image for our own benefit. God is already God, and nothing can be added to him. So whatever he's doing is for our own good. We've had be ye holy, for I am holy. That is a very wonderful privilege for us to be the children of God, for us to be an image of God is something beyond our imagination. But sometimes, you know, this very thought is being driven away, according to the scripture, from the heart of those that are lost. Because if you know the intricacy of being a child of God, no one needs to persuade you. All that he says we will follow in order to be, you know, pure, powerful, extraordinary like him. So that is the sense of all these laws. Secondly, as we proceed, you can understand that it's not only for the spiritual benefit, even for the uh, physical and health-wise as well. Some food we may eat may not be healthy 
to our system. Some meat we may eat may not be held into our system. Thank God, actually, uh, they are, the, the coming of Jesus Christ, you know, removed all that are not necessary. But at the same time, we should understand how God wants us, you know, to behave and to handle things as children of God. As we continue the lesson in three subheadings, we will be going into details on how and why all these laws were given. Number one subheading we are going to consider today is classification of clean and unclean animals. Second subheading, purification rites and cleansing after childbirth. And finally, ceremonial uncleanliness and purification under the gospel dispensation. As we consider point number one, let's read from Genesis chapter, two, chapter 7 verse 2. Genesis chapter 7, verse 2. If you are there, please, you can quickly read for us. Any volunteer? Genesis chapter 7, verse 2. Anybody, any brother, any sister? 7, 2. Of every clean of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by servants, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Praise the Lord. She says, It's of every clean beast thou shalt take of thee by servants, the male and the female, and of beasts that are not clean. Can you see the classification somehow, the division? At the beginning, when you read Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, when God created the earth, there was nothing like separation. He created, Bible says, when his spirit moved toward the surface of the water, God says, let there be light. And from there he created, let there be land, let there be no, uh, let the, uh, the, 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 the land gather together and, and separate from the sea. And in the sea, say, let there be you know, fishes and all sorts. So there was no one tagged clean or unclean. Brother, God says, he looked at all what he has made. It was beautiful. But how comes at this point in time, there has been two segments, two sets of you know, a creature, clean and unclean. So that brings us back to the consequence of the fall of man. Because he who made at the beginning look at all that he made, he would have said, fine, there are some creatures that are unclean. No, but the Bible says everything was wonderful. And God says, let us make man in our image. After he has created all these beautiful things, but at this point in time, in chapter 7, verse 2, and Every clean beast thou shalt take thee by servants. That was the starting point. Here, after hundreds and thousands of years, he discovered an individual that would be a source of reestablishing the earth. Now, when he has found them, you can now see the laws he gave. You should not do this. You should not do that. There are three different you know, a, a classification of animals. He instructed them not to eat. The ones in the land, the sea creatures, and the flying you know, a, a animals. Each and every one of them has the same you know, a, a division, clean and unclean. He talked about the, the ones that we should eat. He talked about the animal that has, you know, a host, divided host. 
If you look at the leg of a cow, you see it is separated into two. And not only that, that is one of the characteristics. And secondly, it must be an animal that chewed the cord. Anyone that did not meet these very two requirements, they are not meant for the, and they, they are not good to be eaten. And one will be asking, what is the essence of all this? Thank God for Jesus Christ, as I said earlier, who removed some of this, you know, snag, this question mark. Because by faith now, what we could not, you know, what we could not handle, God himself will take care of it. Because when he created all these animals in the beginning, he didn't instruct Adam not to eat any of them. Rather, he told him, this is the fruit you should not eat. So whatever may be the consequence of all those things, God takes care of it without any problem, without even reminding you the consequences. But if you look at certain animals he mentioned here from, from physical point of view, because it's not everybody that is saved, and that is the sense of being, when you are saved, you are you know, pulled out from this uh, handwriting of ordinances. Because as I read in, uh, as we read in Genesis chapter 7, we had this very fact. Initial, it started clean and unclean. So the same sinful nature are transcending even up to, to, the, to the present time. So you can never tell what will be the consequence of all this instruction given. Think about a couple of years ago. We'll have from the, you know, from the research and all the experiments that they carried in the laboratory that most of the, what brought coronavirus was as a result of Chinese people not being, you know, they can eat anything. And eventually some of the venom in those abnormal things they ate exploded the virus that took the life of millions. So, but God knows and for the interest of his people, you know, Bible says he gives his commandment to save us. So we can avoid certain, you know, a mishap, certain misfortune based on those instructions he gave. Think about it. Vulture today, any dead stuff can be eaten by a vulture. So the same thing, maybe it was meant to be a, an, an edible you know, bird. And a hunter eventually, when after it must have taken some disease from wherever, you hunt, happens to hunt such bird and take it in, what will be the outcome? The same sickness will now kill the person, the victim. So, but God knows all this. So, when you go into details, what made him, because someone has already polluted the earth, which is the devil, who deceived Adam and Eve. So, now they want to handle things by themselves. And there are things that were not revealed to them that were being handled by the Lord. So, but today, what lesson are we learning from all this? We should keep to God's instruction. In Leviticus chapter 3, chapter 11, sorry, verse 3, where we read. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 3. Just to portray what we've just said. Um, Verse 3 says, Whatsoever pertaineth the hope and is clove footed and cheweth the cord among the beasts that shall ye eat. Anything outside this? Forget it. You think about a pig, for example, I think from our book letter, so it was there. It has parted hope. But it doesn't chew the cord. Because animals that chew the cord from those of us who are physicians, when you chew certain food very well, 
it will be easily, it, it, it will digest easily into your system. And those animals like cow, which is a very wonderful meat everyone eats, you know, we have not developed any problem because the system, the way, the manner, and everything that the cow do feed, it was some, it's among the ruminants that do vomit and rechew. So they were very, very good and healthy. But think about the pig, which meet one of the characteristics, but not the two. Eventually, you can see how pig do wallow in, you know. If you see pig and they bring the meat to you, you may not like to eat it. No matter how you may wash pig, just allow it. The most dirty place is where it will go and stumble in. So those dirty stops, really sometimes when you get closer to dirty environment, people that are allergic, they will start to have a kind of skin disease. Talk less of animals that can dampen into such rubbish. And eventually it's something that human being will take in. So sometimes when you boil it very well, certain you know, uh, bacteria may die. But what about the people that may not care? Because most of those meat, you know, they will just have cooked it half done without minding what that are behind our knowledge. So God knows all this just for, you know, to inform, make us know that it is not just God bringing laws to restrict man, but to bring in laws that will be of great benefit spiritually and, you know, and, 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 and physically as well. The last point in this very one before we go to the next uh, subheading. By giving these laws, it also helped the children of Israel to distance themselves from idol worshippers. Like most of these animals, they are used by heathens to worship idol. And God, giving all these laws, at least we will make them to distance themselves because no one wants to be defied. You see what that is, what that are involved. Whenever someone got him or herself defied, so you may not have money, you may not have you know, the resources to purify yourself. You may not be privileged to be in the midst of God's people. So for that reason, by default, they will distance themselves and thereby fulfilling the separation, which did not start today. It, 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 it started from the fall of man. Everything becomes too clean and unclean. Righteous and unrighteousness. These are not the way God made the earth, but from the fall of man, all these things gave birth. So question number one, quickly, what can we what can a believer learn from the laws of clean and unclean animal and purification right? Let's be a little bit fast, please. Um, um, Apostle God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what... Uh, Believers can learn from the law of clean and unclean animal and the, the law of purification is that uh, the children of Israel they came out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage. So they have been corrupted there and they practiced their life anyhow. Now that God has brought them out and God wants to regulate their life by setting a law, just like if there's no traffic light. Everybody will just be beaten, and that will cause sudden destructions, and God does not want that. So that's why God set laws, so that through them, obeying these physical laws, which also have significant spiritual consequences, we know that these people are ready to serve him. And with that, they can be able to live that holy and righteous life that God wants them to be holy because he is holy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah, actually, you made a point. See, uh, their obedience speaks volume. So, uh, we as believers, God should set a kind of 
demarcation between the righteous and the unrighteous, clean and unclean, we should understand the reason why we are redeemed. It's not that God is a kind of segregative in nature, but they, as I said, they started from the fall of man. So we should be obedient to the word of God by being totally committed to the righteous living. Question number two, what health and hygiene reason can be advanced in support can be advanced in support of the prohibition of most of most unclean animals as unsafe for human consumption. Did you get the question? What health and hygiene reasons can be advanced in support of the prohibition of most unclean animals as unsafe for human consumption? I emphasize on that, I think. No one, okay, go ahead. That means we are not reading the booklet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just as a teacher have told us so. Because God does not want us to die, maybe prematurely, because of what we eat. So we need to just like there is food poison. So if some of these animals, God has said no, that we shouldn't do eat them because of the health system, just like the pig, as our teacher told us, if you eat them without proper preparation, you might be afflicted or infected by disease. And so we should be conscious of that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Question number three, quickly. What lessons on holiness and separation from the world does the law of clean and unclean animal teach us? What lesson of holiness and separation from the world? Nobody. Twenty twenty four. First Sunday of the year. All the answers are in our booklet. Thank God the blessing God. Hallelujah. Is the Lord recently concerning it is that God does not want us to be confirmed with the world. So he wants us at least like going to be something that shows that this is a believer, this is a child of God. So we need to do things sometimes differently, like the way the world does their things. So it's not that God is. Uh, he doesn't want us to be like the world, but we, there's a mark that shows that these people are believers, they are the people that serve God. So they don't just carry everything along, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I understand. Yeah, even literally, without even uh, looking at the book, <clears throat> booklet, uh, God, clean and unclean, is a distinct separation. This is not right, this is right. Without even uh, going through the study scripture. So, it's, uh, once you are a child of God, you are counted among the clean. And anything sin has to go with, you know, uncleanliness, even in the physical uh, uh, illustration or whatever. It is, it's, it's as simple as that. So, you want to be holy, you must be clean. You want, I mean, you, want to, you are a child of God, you want to be clean. God demarcated them. These are the things that we should not do. So, time is on our side. Quickly, I will just run through the two subverters. Purification, right. And cleansing after child, childbirth. So I will just quickly read in chapter 12 and then summarize. Because this is also important. 
Uh, he said in chapter 2, he said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a, a, a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the law, uh, days of separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of, the, of, of his foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall then continue in the blood of, the, of her purifying three, three and thirty days. She shall touch no hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the day of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a male child, that's female, then she shall be unclean two weeks as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying threescore and sixty days. You see here, a purification is in a kind of a accomplished task that is done for one to be free from uncleanliness. So, but why should that be? Still takes us back to the origin of all this abnormality. The fall of man makes giving birth to a new child becomes bondage. God who blessed Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply, now is now giving instruction that if a woman gives birth to a child, she should be, you know, separated from the presence of God, from the favor of God, from the goodness of God. You can imagine that. You see, Bible says secret things belong to God because when you are reading all these laws, not only for, you know, uh, 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 it's for, for, you learn a lot because it will give you double thought to think about, is it not God that created the earth? But why then now, woman giving birth to a child, a new child that is just coming, coming down with bondage? Yes, because devil has, you know, colonized the earth. So for that child now to be purified, the womb that even bear the child will be separated. So these are the benefits why, why we must appreciate Christ's death and resurrection more than words can tell. So now, what about if anything happened to the, father, the mother or the child? Two of them are straight away. That is express rule to her. Because automatically for you to be separated from God means you are alienated. So you, you have nothing at all to enjoy in his kingdom. But why? The fall of man. So can you see the state of an unbeliever? These things are still in place. Because only those who have accepted Jesus Christ have, you know, the only, the, only, the only reason why we have things abated is because the grace, Bible says the laws come through Moses, but grace comes through Jesus Christ. So that grace makes the anger of God not to be as usual. But yet all these, you know, laws, they are still in place. It is only for believers who have received Christ are free because he has paid the huge price, which you and I cannot pay. So that very price he paid made us, God here, lamenting, be holy, be this, be this, because we have, yeah, come to the knowledge of the truth. Very, very, you know, important. Only time will not permit us. Because, you know, most of these lessons, they require a lot of uh, explanation. So the birth of a new child, male child, is to be, she will be out for 40 days. Female, 80 days. And after that, you will not come up. After this, these days must be complete. Because for eight, seven days for the male, one day for purification, and another, another, another 33 days. So now, after that, now you will come in the seas. And when the days of her purification are fulfilled for a son, for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of first year for a bond offering, and a young pigeon, and a turtle dove for a sin offering, unto the door of the tabernacle for the congregation, unto the priest. You see the requirement. It's not an easy task. But yet, Christ took all this out of our shoulder, out of our neck. Praise the Lord. Finally, the thoughts of heading. Ceremonial uncleanliness and purification under the gospel under the gospel dispensation. 
You know, Bible made it clear in the book of Romans, I mean, it's Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. All the activities involved in what we've read, all the laws, sundry laws, the blood of Jesus Christ has set us free. And not only that, setting us free for us to live for God, number one. And also, that liberty, we should not use it as a stumbling block to those that are not saved. Because we may eat everything, as the Bible says, as long as it is blessed in the name of the Lord. But yet, those ones that are sacrificed to idols, Bible made it clear that if we are in the place where we know, people that has no faith may think that it is ordinary. They don't know what we have inside, that we have that faith that, yes, this world, that this very stuff has been blessed. You eat. Such person may eat and then fall victim. So in that regard, it is very, very important for us to know how to use our liberty when it comes to the freedom that we receive from Christ. Praise the Lord. That's where we'll round up and our pastor will do the summary and also take the questions. You're welcome, sir. study of this morning, I don't think uh, we should have any questions about this study. But if you do, please ask, based on what we have studied this morning, if there are questions, please feel free to ask. If you don't ask me, I will ask because it's important that uh, we understand what uh, we have been taught this morning. Yes, Apostle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my question is uh, based on the Old Testament and uh, like you see like the pig, mm. is some of the, the, the meat that uh, I think the Europeans mm. they enjoy a lot. So okay. is it that <laughs> had they not disobeying God or maybe it's because Christ has said, did not say it's unclean because it's created by God. So I don't All right. quite get that. Thank you. That is a very a good question. And, and that was uh, the question that uh, <clears throat> came to mind or that should come to mind for everyone that uh, has read this passage. First of all, it is important that we understand the um, change that has taken place uh, from the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is good that we understand that uh, throughout the scriptures we see God's progressive dealings with man. Um, some things that the Lord told uh, the people of old to do. In the New Testament, um, it is a bit different. But, but most times, the things that we were told to do in the Old Testament, they are shadows of the things that eventually uh, God expects us to do in the New Testament that we are uh, now maybe doing in our own dispensation. But it is also important that we establish that, just like the Bible tells us in the New Testament, the Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. Take note of that. And be in good health even as your soul prospereth. The idea that um, God gave uh, these people, all these you know, laws, all these ceremonial laws concerning what they should eat and what they should not eat, is very significant. It is because God wants them to be healthy. Very, very important because perhaps, just like the teacher said when, we were, when he was teaching, he said that at creation, God saw that everything was good. 
But fast forward to chapter 7 of Genesis in verse 20. The Bible says that when Noah was to take in the animals into the ark, God told him specifically that there are some unclean beasts, there are some clean. In chapter 8, again, that again was followed up. Come with me. Let us quickly look at that, those passages together. So you can see what has happened between the time that God gave, um, God finished creation, and he said that everything was good and, you know, perfect, to the time when he now told Noah not to do some things. In Genesis chapter 7, then we'll read there in verse 20. <clears throat> yes, Genesis chapter 7, verse 20. And 15 cubits, no, that's not the passage that I'm looking for. Let me, it's uh, Genesis chapter 2, it's chapter 8 verse 20. Let me read chapter 8 verse 20, then I will come to uh, chapter 7 verse 2. Uh, look at what the Bible says, And Noah built an ark, I'm reading Genesis chapter 8 verse 20, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, can you see that? And of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering unto the Lord, unto the, on the altar. Essentially, here you find that even at this point, there has been this, you know, uh, uh, um, difference. Um, look at in chapter 7 in verse 2. Of every clean beast, this was um, just about when the uh, flood was to happen. The chapter 8 was after the flood. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So perhaps one of the things that has happened between the time that God finished creation and this time was or could have been maybe a, a number of people using different animals for their idol you know, worship. And as a result, those, uh, idol, those animals have become unclean. And God now had to tell him, you know, don't touch them anymore. And it is because God wants us to be clean within and without. He's, you know, interested in our well-being. When he told the children of Israel to do this and don't eat this, as you read through the first um, uh, eight uh, verses, you'll find laws regarding you know, mammals, beasts, all those things, all those things that are creeping on the head. And when you move further, you see concerning the fowls, you know, of the air. When you move further, then you see, you know, um, what's it called? Um, the sea animal, fish, and all of those things. There were specific laws. But how does that apply to us in the New Testament? When you read in Acts chapter 10, you find the response of God to what Peter called unclean. Come with me to that passage. Let me show you. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 10, let me read from verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. I want you to take note of this um, Bible passage, very important, because this individual too, having read the law of Moses, 
he thought these things were still applicable. But look at what the Bible says. And I will tell you what has changed um, in the New Testament from then and, uh, and now. And in verse 11, he saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and led down to the head, wherein in verse 13 were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the head. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Then in verse 14, Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or what? Unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God has cleansed, thou call not what? That call not thou common or unclean. This was done three times, three eyes. And the vessel were, was received up again into heaven. And now, Peter, uh, while Peter doubted in, uh, in himself what this vision uh, which he had seen should mean, behold, the men uh, which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiries from Simon's house and stood before the gate. You know the story. Essentially, what this is saying is what the New Testament has already said to us, which is, if you um, know that there are some food that you don't want to eat because of what the Bible says or because it is detrimental to your head, no problem. You can stay away from it. But the Bible makes it very clear that whatever we do, whatever we, you know, in action or in words or in deed, we should do it in the name of the Lord. Come with me. Let me quickly show you. Um, Colossians chapter 3. So if somebody sets food before you and you are thinking in your head, maybe you have visited somebody and he put fish before you. And you now you are looking at the fish and you, are, you remember Leviticus chapter 11 that says that ah, any fish that has no fin, I should know it. And you are now asking the person, sorry, this is your fish that you served me. Does he have fins? You remember what the Bible says? That will not be, you know, any way sensible. Look at what it says, Colossians chapter 3 in verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Uh, come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm showing you the, the reference to that passage now. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I read it in verse 31. What, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, what did the Bible say? Do all to the glory of God. So the idea that, you know, sometimes, you know, I've seen some people, and I just laugh. I know it's nothing but ignorance or pride. Christians or some people are gathering together or gathered together. And they have come and they want to show that they are Christian. And they served food. Rather than for them to take that food, give thanks, exercise their authority and faith, and eat. No, they will say, I don't eat like that. When we went to Nigeria, the GS himself, after the Sunday worship service, he sat down with all the leaders. They brought the food that they serve all the leaders. Everybody, he sat down and ate. He's still alive today. Doesn't make him less spiritual. But you'll find some brethren for them to show that uh, Sometimes it's even in, in the church, when we serve food in the church, for them to show that, oh, I am, it's nonsense. It shows that they don't know who they are. This passage is telling us, if you happen to be in a place where uh, 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 they serve the kind of food that you don't eat, and you saw people eating it, and they did not die, and your life, is dependent on that meal that you should eat it and you fail to eat it. You will die of hunger 
and go to, if you are good, you go to heaven. If you are bad, you go to hell. But the point is, when you get there, you will know you have done foolishly. Nothing but foolishly. As long as this thing is not harmful to your health, you put the set it before you, pray over it, give thanks, eat it to the glory of God. It's God that has provided. So when you find many people in many parts of the world and you find them eating one thing and eating the other thing and eating, if that's their conscience, if it is fine with their conscience, that's all. Up till today as we speak, they are Jews. They don't eat pork. Even Muslims, they don't eat pork. But where we have the largest uh, percentage of Catholics eating, if they don't eat pork, they will die. So tell me, how do you reconcile it? And there are Christians too that eat pork. The reason why they don't eat, most times they don't eat pork, they said it carries, especially when it's not properly cooked. Take note of that. When it's not properly cooked, they said it has some, you know, uh, um, you know hazard or else uh, problems to the stomach when it's not properly cooked because of the skin. But it is not that if you eat pork, you will go to hell. No. So it's important that we know what has happened. The Bible tells us from that passage that I read to you about Peter and the case of Cornelius. The Bible says God told him, anything God has blessed, don't call it uncommon. So when you go to a place and you sit down and you bless it, there are people today that eat birds. There are people today that eat us. There are people today that eat all kinds of things. And as long as it doesn't, you know, offend anybody and it's not detrimental to their health, it doesn't mean that uh, God will tell them, oh, didn't you read uh, in Leviticus that I say you should not eat this? But between this uh, chapter uh, 11, we see, uh, you know, we can see everything that has happened. And I'm praying that the Lord will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Many of us, we have visited places that all we have seen, you know, met with people with, of other cultures that they don't eat what we, you know, we eat. And they served us and we ate it without asking questions and we moved on. So the reason why God gave these laws to uh, uh, the children of Israel at the time, first of all, is for them, for him to know if they will be obedient to him. If uh, their belly will be their God, that whatever, you know, they want, they, if God cannot tell you, if God cannot regulate even what you eat, you cannot be obedient in little things as per what you eat, then, more so, because of some of these, uh, uh, the Id I I I idolaters that surrounded Israel, God wanted to limit their interaction with them, because where is fellowship? If I come to your house and I don't eat what you eat and I don't drink what you drink, there, is, there, there cannot be friendship. So God intentionally did that, number one, for health reason. Number two, to see if they will be obedient to him, even in little things as common as food. Number three is to limit their fellowship and interaction with the surrounding idolatrous nations. So that when I know that when I visit you, I cannot eat what you are eating because you, what you are eating, I don't eat. Then there will be little, there will be little or nothing to, to, to share together. So this has changed between now and then, uh, then and now. And from the passages that I have showed you, Acts chapter 10, Colossians chapter 3, and uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, um, uh, no, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, which one? Uh, yes, chapter Corinthians chapter ten. You can see all of it that those three Bible passages they show what has changed in the New Testament. That whatever, wherever you go, whatever they serve before you, sit down, pray, thank God for it, and you are free to eat. And I pray as we do, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Quickly, uh, chapter twelve. 
In Leviticus chapter 12, what do we find? We saw from the passage that our brother read that um, the law of purification after a child's birth was given. Now, in the New Testament, does that still apply? Of course not. The Bible tells us in that chapter 12 of Leviticus that when a woman gives birth and it's a male child, she will go first through the seven days of purification. On the eighth day, they will go and do the dedication, the naming, or whatever, you know. Then she will now continue the process again for 33 days, 33 long days. That is if she gave birth to a male. And that period of purification will continue. If she gave birth to a female, she will do the first seven days. The eighth day, that child will be dedicated or, you know, um, you know uh, na named as we saw in the case. Even Mary, in Luke chapter 22, you see, uh, Luke chapter 2 rather, you see that the mother of Jesus also obeyed that law. The Bible says, after the day of her purification was over, according to the law of Moses, Leviticus, that was when Jesus was brought into the temple. But then, what has changed in the New Testament? Oh, let, let me uh, uh, finish with the wom woman. If she gave birth to a female, then she would do the seven days. The eighth day, they will uh, uh, name the child. But now, it's not 33 days now. It will be 66 days. It will take longer for the woman to go through purification because she has given birth to a female child um, less than if it were a male child. When that is done, then she can now begin to come into you know, the congregation of God's people because by then she will be considered clean. Now, in the New Testament, considering this is our dispensation and how we are living now. If you say you are going to bring that to bear, they will sack you from work. Because if you say, okay, I gave birth to a, 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 a female, and because of that reason, especially when you don't have the kind of contract that they pay you, and you are not allowed to, to be out of work for more than maybe a month or, or two, or even, I know some people in the U.S., it's so, so sad. The working condition in the U.S. is so terrible in some places that you will find a woman that has given birth, and within two weeks, she's going back to work. It's as bad as that. It's not a story told. It's somebody that I know. I was there when the person told me I have to get back to work. Is two weeks because otherwise it's either they replace her or they won't pay her and she needs the money. So think about it. If that person is going to say, ah, come, um, you people, didn't you read the Bible? Uh, the Bible says that I should be home for 66 days. Then they will tell you, okay, don't worry. When the month ends, you go to uh, King James to pay you salary. And that is just the truth. So there are times when those things, in this case, in the New Testament, when the woman gives birth to a child, as long as she's okay, she can come back to church as soon as she's ready. There's no such thing as waiting for 33 because you're giving birth to a, a, a male and waiting for 66 days because you have given birth to a female. No, that doesn't you know, apply. So it, it is important. This, like they say, they are ceremonial laws that God had given. And there were reasons, some of which I have mentioned to you, why God gave those, you know, uh, laws. But it is important that we know and we compare whatever we have read in the Old Testament with what the Bible is saying in the New Testament. And I pray that the Lord will help us and give us understanding in Jesus' name. Finally, before we wrap up, when this passage opened, for you to know that God is, you know, uh, is a God that wants his law to 
you know, be carried out both in the society and in, you know, amongst his people. Not just, you know, restricted to his people, but unfortunately that is not the case. The Bible says God called Aaron and Moses. Look at that passage with me. Um, our text. Leviticus chapter 10, no, 11. And I read here in verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron. Can you see? Both of them were there. Saying unto them, speak unto the children of Israel. Now, why Moses and Aaron? Moses, in this <clears throat> dispensation in the Old Testament, among the children of Israel, represents or represented government. That's why you will see every time when there were problems, they will bring a people to him, so you will judge them, you will judge them, you will judge them to the point that he was judging them too much and his father-in-law told him, this thing is too much for you, you will have problems. Why don't you, you know, choose other men? Aaron, on the other hand, is a priest. So, by, you know, by, by, by God's own uh, will and purpose, he wanted these laws also to be applicable if it is a state or if it is a government, we will tell them. So they will know that this thing is coming from God. When they hear it in the mouth of the priest and they hear it in the mouth of the government, they will have no, I mean, no need, no, no reason not to obey. But you can see how the society have changed over the years. And one of the things that I, as bad as it is, even though those people, do, they, they may not really know what they are doing, is that the Muslims, especially when you find them in these Islamic nations, they still take that word in the Quran serious. That's why you will find some states that they will tell you, this is Sharia law. The governments will not say, Changes. Even the government itself is doing Sharia law. It is we Christians, us Christians, that have become something else. That the state will say, no, keep uh, God's law out of it, keep religion out of it. But you'll find most of all these other nations. Go to Saudi Arabia, go to Iran, you know, uh, go to some northern parts of Nigeria. They have uh, police that enforces you know, Sharia law. I, 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 I really wish that we have, you know, in so many uh, so-called Christian nations that we have such kind of, you know, things that enforces, you know, the law. But unfortunately, as Christians, we have enjoyed a lot of liberty and freedom. And it has gotten into our head that we don't really do what we ought to be doing. But I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet. Our time is fast spent. Let's, let's call upon the Lord, and the Lord will help us, that we will obey. That whatever he has uh, said to us this morning, we will obey. Whatever you do in word and in deed, do it to the glory of God. Call upon the Lord, talk to the Lord. that we will not make the conscience of others to be offended as a result of our conduct. Talk to the Lord. That all those things that we eat and is detrimental to our health, the Lord will give us the courage. Today, we eat a lot of things that are detrimental to our health. Even though it's not written in the Bible, it doesn't mean that you should go and eat it. Sugar is more dangerous, and yet we eat it. Food with high calories, they are very dangerous, and yet we enjoy them. Talk to the Lord. That the Lord will give us wisdom. To manage our well-being and our health. There is a food for the aging man. 
And we need to know that the older we get, the more we stay away from some, for some food. The will of God is, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prospereth. Talk to the Lord. That the Lord will keep you in health. Even in this new year, everything that threatens your health and your well-being, the Lord will take away. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord our God, we thank you this morning for your word. We're praying and asking that you'll give us the understanding and the grace we need, as well as the wisdom to be able to live by this word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray.